Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today we're talking Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Watch Mojo put out a top 10 revelations in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. You know what? Jay and I felt the need to talk about it and fix their order because I don't think they quite got it right and I want to add a few of our own. So let's get into this. Before I do, I have to introduce my favorite co-host, my guy I put out cigarettes on. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> my husband, Jay. Thanks for being here, Jay. Haha, uh-huh, don't worry. She doesn't put cigarettes on I me. Mean, she doesn't even smoke. She just spits her big wad of chaw out on me. <laughs> But yes, you can find me on YouTube also as Dr. Bad Vibes, and much of this is a revelation. I don't know, I don't keep up with celebrity stuff, so pretty much all of this is eye-opening for me, but a few things I did know, and I was shocked that Amber Heard didn't know. As always, I'm putting a warning here, they do get into specific instances of things that may be triggering to some people. So if you're sensitive to any kind of, they get into like physical stuff, they get into different kinds of assault. So just know that that is mentioned. So you may want to skip this one if you're sensitive to that kind of thing. Otherwise, let's get into this. I wanted to point out that YouTube just added a thank you button to my videos, which I'm super excited about. Anything given through the thank you button comes straight to me and will be put toward the new microphone I'm saving for. So again, thank you all who have contributed. It truly means a lot to me. I appreciate every single one of you. So check that out. Let's get into this. Okay, so their number 10 is depth detoxification. So the whole thing with this is, you know, of course, Depp goes into how tumultuous the relationship is. He's always been honest about being a longtime user of substances. And... But unfortunately, he says that because of the awful relationship, it did unfortunately increase his need for substances, which I shall not talk about because YouTube doesn't like it. Um, He detailed about his having to detox with Amber, and it sounds like a nightmare on so many levels, but he claims that she wouldn't give him the medicine at the right time, and it made his suffering that much worse. Yeah, and this is a perfect side note of saying, uh, you know, we're not strictly Team Johnny. I mean, both of them sound like they've been very toxic individuals, but the accusations Amber is throwing out do not sound to line up with what actually happened. I mean, if he's a piece of crap, whatever, but, you know, if he didn't actually do that, that's cost him a big chunk of his livelihood. I mean, he's being pushed out of movies he's been in for a long time. I mean, you know, that's that's not cool. But at the same time, I mean, I'm sure living with somebody that had substance abuse problems and, um, you know, and subsequent... Getting off of that is very difficult. I mean, I, that's, that's no walk in the park. I mean, it, it's got a very low recovery rate. And I'm sure that was not a nightmare to deal with, you know, going in and going out. But that being said, I mean, that doesn't give anybody the right to hit anybody. So number nine, one of the few things I actually knew, which I was shocked that Amber Heard seemingly did not know, was that when Depp dated Winona Ryder between 1989 and 1993, he had a Winona Forever tattoo on his arm. Uh, after They were engaged for a bit, and after they called that off, I mean, rather than remove it, I guess he just changed it to say, Why No, for, why no Forever, which I thought almost everybody knew. I mean, the, if I knew that... Like, I, I, it's probably safe to say everybody knew it. So, I, I mean, I, I guess I know Amber is younger by a bit, but still, I mean, the whole story that she told made no sense. Like, uh, her reaction to it saying, well, it sounds like she made fun of it. And then Johnny acted like she was very mad about it, which I, I tend to believe that because given her, uh, well, uh, accusations and seeming uh, evidence of uh, infidelity, the fact that she's projecting that, like, you know, he can't have anything to do with uh, his exes or whatever, I mean, that's kind of a red flag to me that, you know, she's putting that out on him. But, I mean, it's his wino forever. I mean, I doubt he got mad if she laughed at it. Obviously, it's a joke. Uh, you know, I don't think he's like a card carrying wino that's, uh, you know, a serious organization or anything. Yeah. So 
she, so, okay, Depp says that she got pissed and wanted her name tattooed on him, which, again, it, like Jay said, it's ridiculous. Like, it's an X. It's, I understand you may not want to look at it, but to get pissed over it, especially when he's covered in tattoos, it's kind of ridiculous, right? Okay, whatever. Um, but, so he ended up getting Slim tattooed on him as a tribute to her, because it's what she, he called her. And he ended up changing it. And I kind of love this. He changed it to scum, which is hilarious. And then from scum, he changed it to scam, which I like even better. So number eight revelation is substances. Use your imagination there at the engagement party and at the wedding. So it came out, they each accused each other of substances. And she went, she was accusing him of, Gosh, YouTube's so weird. I don't know if I can say it. It starts with an H. And he was accusing her of... Mm, duh. <laughs> I, don't, I think I can say MDMA. He's accusing her of that. But, um, yeah, so they were accusing each other. But the funniest part is he says that she had a schedule of the wedding. And on it had a time allotted to take substances. Yeah, I believe we still have a copy of our uh, itinerary somewhere. We had... You know, the opening ceremony, and then uh, we had the seating arrangements where everybody got their own complimentary uh, spot at the mirrored table with uh, uh, monogrammed razor blades and uh, counterfeit $100 bills with their photos on it. I just wanted a very organized wedding, that's all. Okay, number seven, Herd's mental health. You guys, I don't know. I think Watch Mojo kind of got lazy on this one and lumped them all together, but I'll break it down for you. So you got Pearl here. Yep, that's what I call her. Her real name is Dr. Dawn Hughes. If you watch the trial, she's the most annoying person on the stand besides Herd herself. I think Herd has to have that on her, but she's pretty close. So the way I understand it, maybe I have it a little bit wrong, but from what I could tell, Pearl was hired by Amber's team, got paid $100,000 for her time on the stand, sure, and miraculously diagnosed her with PTSD, even though the test was self-reported. Isn't that amazing how that works? She also uh, diagnosed her with intimate partner violence. So there's that. Okay, let's go over to my hero, Dr. Shannon Curry. Dr. Shannon Curry is for Depp's side. She is this amazing doctor. If you watch nothing else in the trial, well, definitely watch Amber on the stand because it's wild, but here's Dr. Curry. Watch her part. It's so fascinating. She is so well-spoken and really explained it all very clearly and says basically she spent 12 hours with Herd and her symptoms were exaggerated. Imagine that, that Herd self-reported 19 of 21 PTSD symptoms. And the reason I'm kind of laughing through that is because she explained that's not a thing, meaning people with real PTSD often have many symptoms, but that number doesn't make any sense. And Curry only found that she was showing three of the symptoms, which, I mean, hello, can't any of us be found at any given time with at least three of the symptoms? Um, she also diagnosed her with borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder. I had to look that up, and I'm going to read it to you. Histrionic personality disorder is a person. Uh, sorry, I got <laughs> got lost. Of course it's a person. Okay. She, they, she, they seek attention. They talk dramatically with strong opinions. They are easily influenced, have rapidly changing emotions and think relationships are closer than they are. You guys, I'm nervous. I might have this. <laughs> I laughed all the way through it. Cause like, Oh God, I change my mind all the time. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, so you could say I seek attention and I feel like I'm good friends with each and every one of you. So <laughs> I might have this. Oh shit. Number six, goodbye to Jack Sparrow. So this is the tale of talent agent Jack Wiggum, Pirates of the Caribbean 6. He was in talks to receive $22 million that Jack Wiggum will never see. I don't know who's more upset over this. But uh, Johnny really wanted to give uh, Captain Jack Sparrow a proper goodbye. And he, he learned he was being dropped by Disney uh, after the op-ed that Amber had written uh, through another article saying that they were, you know, essentially cutting ties with him. So that he was upset, and he says now that even if he was given $300 million and a million alpa alpacas, which I guess is currency now, this is the world we live in, uh, he says he will never work with Disney in that role again. Uh, 
which I say never say never if money's involved, but uh, that, that is that is sad. I, I would like to see him at least walk the plank and you know go out with a bang, shoot him out of a cannon into another pirate ship at least. I agree. I I hate what Disney did to him, but I do. I love that role for him, so I would love to see another Pirates movie. So time will tell. Maybe they'll mend their relationship. Disney will have to write a big old apology and uh, give him a big fat payday. I think that'd be fun to watch. Number five, the rotting corpse text. And Watch Mojo got a little lazy on this. We'll go into a little more detail. So there was a whole series of texts between Johnny Depp and his friend Paul Bettany. Uh, It sounds like Depp and Heard got into an argument, some sort of big fight and this is before they were even married and he debt being friends with paul bettany they were according to him they were basically joking back and forth uh i guess essentially referencing the monty python skit from from the holy grail where uh you know trying to test if somebody's a witch or not like burning her and drowning her and all, all that and i mean paul bettany's British, I guess, right? And uh, so, I mean, that checks out. Monty Python, Paul Bettany, there we go. There's the connection. But, I mean, it's hard to say without context. I mean, that's so over the top. I mean, like, it's probably a joke. I mean, my friends and I, the stuff we said, if you just took it out of context, you'd think we were a bunch of sociopaths gunning for each other. I mean, that's just how guys text. Jay, you did a great job on this part, but I'm very passionate about this, so I gotta speak up and say that is an awesome movie. I totally, I mean, as soon as I heard burn her and drown her, I knew it. I mean, it's Monty Python and the Holy Grail. How do you know she's a witch? Uh, you know, burn her. And if she weighs more than a duck, she turned me into a newt. I love that movie so much. So good. I actually found the text hilarious. And I was really trying to think if I found those texts on Jay's phone, would I be pissed or would I just think it was funny? I'd be pissed that he was texting a friend that we had a fight, but I don't know. Like if he's quoting a movie about it, uh, I just find it funny. Yeah. I mean, how many movie, you could probably put in any kind of movie quote and be taken out of context. Uh, what if somebody's quoting freaking Gone with the Wind and Rhett's like, you know, you're just saying, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. And then somebody picks it up. It's like, oh, he doesn't give a damn. He's got one foot out the door. You got to leave him. Okay, number four, audio recordings. So this would be my number one. These recordings are so incredible. They have come out. There's been several of them now. I believe they came out around 2020. Um, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp would record themselves as per, I think it was a deal they had done with the counselor so they could listen to themselves back in arguments. It sounds like a good idea. Uh, worked out well for us because we get to hear all of the behind the scenes goodness unedited and in your face. And you guys, I have been posting about it. Uh, you need to get your ears on this audio because it's incredible. I put up a video about what she's been saying on the stand versus what she says in the recordings. It's unbelievable. Uh, the recordings themselves, she says she actually admits to hitting Depp. She talks about throwing things such as pots, pans, vases at Depp. She calls him names. You, I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on. But it's fascinating to listen to. So I would encourage you to listen. There is a YouTube channel called Incredibly Average. He only has a few videos out, but he actually has the recordings. And he is so good at breaking them down and also playing the, the audio with subtitles. So I'd highly recommend you listen. I actually am a big fan of the guy. I really want to do a collab with him. So if you are so inclined, reach out to him and say, hey, collab with Real Housewives Recaps. I'd appreciate that because I really want to... I just think it's so cool that he was able to figure this out before everybody else and have this information. And, um, you know, he's pretty, he's pretty succinct in the way he talks about it. He's pretty, I, I just, really, I like his videos. So yeah, anyway, that's my, that's my soapbox on that. So check out his videos and encourage him to work with me. Definitely check out that video that Jen has made about the audio recordings, because this would clearly be my number one as well. I mean, this is, these are the most damning uh, for Amber Heard's defense. And I don't know much about law, but as a, I may not be a big time city lawyer, but as I sit here and gesture with my invisible suspenders, I know one thing and that's that she's probably lying. And 
it's not fair that uh, you know his career has suffered for this. I mean, whether he wins this case in the legal system or not, I believe he's won the case of public opinion, and uh, you know, uncancel the guy. I mean, that, that's that's all there is to it. Let let him do his thing. I don't see any reason why he can't keep doing what he does, make his make you know make his movies, make his living, and you know just let this go away. I think you mean let Herd go away. Waka waka. Look out, Che Diaz. I'm coming for you. Editor's note: She doesn't mean sexually or violently. Please don't cancel Jen. Number three in 2015 in Australia. Lots of finger pointing going around until the finger couldn't point anymore, due to allegedly. Amber Heard throwing two bottles at Johnny, uh, apparently a vodka bottle, smashed and severed the tip of his finger while she claims it was Depp that assaulted her with a bottle. Um, You know, that's a he he said, she said thing. Uh, No matter the cause, the outcome was very strange because Johnny, you know, he's an eccentric person and probably on a lot of uh, influences at the time. He decided to start painting the wall with his finger until he ran out of, you know, <laughs> blood and paint. yeah, and he ran out of natural paint. So he had the, they said paint thinner, but I believe he got actual red paint, uh, you know, due to the photo, and you know, continued writing and painting what he was doing. So, you know, hey, we all have our own ways of coping with things. That's probably not my choice, but you know, hey, that's what he did. Number two, Depp suspected Heard of having multiple affairs during the marriage. So, supposedly it's come out that James Franco and Elon Musk are two of the people that she's accused of seeing. Now, Elon has said he dated her but denied that it happened while they were married. James Franco, (laughs) they're trying to say, oh no, he just lived in the building. Well, I believe a neighbor came out and said, no, no, no. Like, either he didn't live there at the right time where it would make sense, or I, it doesn't matter. Um, I love this guy right here. This is Alejandro Romero. He's like my favorite person in this trial. He's the concierge. He testified, yes, 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 <laughs> that I believe, I believe he testified that both Franco and Musk were going up to the apartment when uh, Johnny Depp wasn't around. We have this image here of Franco, you know casually nuzzling his <clears throat> neighbor amber heard's neck as you do before getting out going to her apartment this was again while while they were married so interesting fascinating i had heard about both i guess i didn't hear about the elon happening while they were married but i did hear about the james franco of it all and this is the first time seeing those pictures and again like you know when you climb in the elevator to head to your, your apartment or your house or whatever, and your, your condo, and your neighbor gets in, you guys just nuzzle each other's necks. That's the thing, right? It sounds like a lot of people have reached out to Elon for comment, but understandably, I doubt he recalls much. He was probably just on autopilot. Number one, accusations on both sides, which again, I believe Watch Mojo was a little lazy on this, and lumped several things together. A lot of this ties into the audio recordings, but... In general, uh, lots of strange and weird (laughs) accusations have come out. Um, You know, Depp's claiming that uh, Amber stubbed a cigarette out on his face and uh, points at a scar. There seems to be some corroboration uh, with that among a few people. Maybe even the recordings, I believe. I I can't remember. But uh, the biggest one, the biggest elephant in the bed, is the doo-doo. I mean, they they haven't shown them at the trial, I guess, for obvious reasons, but... uh, it sounds like there was first-hand account, well, I guess second-hands, <laughs> number, number, number two accounts of uh, witnesses, and somebody texted Johnny a photo, and I guess he eventually saw it. I mean, somebody pooped the bed, and she blamed the dog, and I doubt a four-pound tea, teacup Yorkie took a four-pound dump. So, you know, there's that. I mean, if anything comes out of this, we know that she's a bed pooper. <laughs> Side note here, after the mics went down, I asked Jay, I was like, oh, I didn't even think about that. Did the photos come out? He, he said, what, like leaked out? Like anal leakage? Did a ditch. We're on fire tonight, but not like cigarette to the face fire. Don't worry. So that's where the countdown ends, but I'm not ready to be done talking about it. Something else that they didn't really talk about that I want to go into is the Milani of it all. In case you've been living under a rock, which I'm sure you know about this, Herd's 
side claims that she had to carry around this concealer, whatever you call it. Correct. It's called a color correcting and concealer palette. And that way she could hide the bruises that happened during the relationship slash marriage. Okay. They, the alleged abuse took place between 2014 and 2016. They got divorced in 2016. The makeup palette came out in 2017. How about that? You know what I love about that is that Milani themselves, the makeup company, reached out and they're the ones that put out the statement saying, no, 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 (laughs) that's not true. So I kind of love them for doing that. Lucky for you, you have an expert on makeup right here. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know anything about this. But it does sound like she exaggerated this along with many other things. Not surprising. So I guess to summarize... um, not looking good for Amber Heard. I don't know from a legal standpoint what's going to happen, but I strongly believe that the court of public opinion has decided. And Johnny will hopefully be uncanceled. Unfortunately for Amber, I believe you know she may be going from partnering with Aquaman in defense of the fish to partnering with OnlyFans and seeing how many fish sticks she can put in her mouth. Uh, thank you, David, for the OnlyFans joke. <laughs> Yeah, so that's it for us. We're going to go ahead and end it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do want to encourage you to check out Jay's channel, Dr. Bad Vibes, very soon. He's going to start streaming Jack Sparrow on his channel. It's awesome. He's going to be playing one of the games where Johnny Depp actually did the voice of Jack Sparrow. And uh, we're all missing Johnny Depp this week since there's no trial. So he'll be streaming that on his channel. Check it out. But again, this has been Jen and Jay and really enjoying going through the details of this case. If you have anything, you know, please leave in the comments. If you have anything you want me to see, you guys have been so good about recommending like other YouTubers and shows I should watch and articles I should read. And I just appreciate every single one of you for that. I appreciate you guys watching and Hey, a huge thank you to everybody who's hit that thanks button. That has been incredible. You guys are so kind and so generous. And I want you to know every single one of you, it just means the world to me. It really does. I am saving for that mic. I know I keep talking about it, but it's a big deal to me because it's going to upgrade my whole show. And I'm very excited about that. So if you're feeling tipsy, ha ha ha, hit that thanks button and leave a little something and that will go directly into the microphone fund again. Thank you, Jay, for being here. He's Dr. Bad Vibes, all one word, no spaces on YouTube. And I am Jen. And hey, if you feel so inclined, let Incredibly Average, that YouTube guy that's amazing, he's so good, um, let him know that we love his videos and that you were sent by Real Housewives Recaps and that you want us to collab because I really want to do something with that guy. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Really appreciate it. I hope you have a fabulous week and look back for tons more content and let me know in the comments if there's something else you want to talk about. Have a great day. Bye-bye.